uh, when, when my 16 millimeter equipment, which was already unthinkably uh, amateur, got stolen, and all I had left was enough money on the way to the grocery store, by the way, uh, to with half of the grocery money to buy a box of used 8 millimeter equipment and bring it home. Uh, small enough that all of it, camera, viewer, and several rolls of film were in a shoebox, as I recall. Bring it home and begin making the 8 millimeter films. I had going for me that strength and determination that knew that ground of all making would could be um, yes amateur um, in in any sense of the word that you want to say that that if 60 millimeter was spaghetti then this was thread you know <laughs> this was practically thread almost hard to see even but but it was available to carry in the pocket it was available of, in its lightweight to to reflect the very pulse of the person holding it. Um, it was available in some sense that it was it came out of a tradition that was for photographing your daily life, your children, uh, your, your, your vacations, <laughs> your uh, whatever, your parties. I, I, I took it into daily life in that full sense and photographed uh, uh, everything in between the parties <laughs> and uh, 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 you know not events but the eventuality of daily living. My myth was uh, that I was a mountain man uh, with a mountain family, a, a mountain man artist, which is what the world so much needed as what I guess is a counterbalance to Andy Warhol's Velvet Underground, some such. And um, also a, a macho man, uh, which I never was, a father figure, which technically I was, but which category I didn't really fit. Um, and brought all kinds of wrath down upon me in the f from the feminist movement increasingly over the years and still. I mean, really, I was a person who'd been mostly ill through his childhood, continued to suffer from both uh, uh, neurotic and literal physical debilities, uh, living in a place where not even the Indians dreamed of staying the year round, where no humans uh, had ever, I'm sure, been intended to live. Uh, being the, the, the fixer-upper of these things, not often having the money to hire anybody and, or to pay them just the gas uh, or, and time mileage to drive up to 9,000 feet to fix a piece of plumbing. I mean, it just almost continuous breaking down nightmare with nature becoming uh, uh, um, a, like the most, how can I say it, as I felt it and as the films were coming out, at the most beautiful terrible enemy that you could possibly have. There was something quite obviously extraordinary that Jane and I and the five Brackage children uh, from that time uh, had achieved in that wondrous uh, uh, Xanadu, <laughs> uh, a truthful Xanadu of mountain living and of family living that uh, uh, was, uh, you know, um, translated over into film and hopefully into art. Coming back from, say, a lecture tour where I was making money, it would take me several days to be able to get into a deep trance state. And once in it, if called to the phone, I would have trouble remembering my name or engaging in any conversation whatsoever. I, I, I kept deliberately a part of me that could respond to, say, children's screams. Um, and as children scream a lot, I would suddenly could leap out of the work, run downstairs and rescue a child, but otherwise, and, and, and could be adequate for that, but really wasn't capable of thinking um, other than, than about the material before me in the editing process. And that served also for the photography, that when photographing, I just uh, would would have stumbled around, except that between photography sessions, I practiced hand holding a camera, exercising over and over again the movements that I might have to make and becoming at one with that camera so that in, in a dead drunk I could uh, handle that camera and every movement that it, it, it made with my body. And um, I could propel it 
with my body uh, in any kind of stupor, and I was in a stupor, uh, which I call a trance state. You might just call it, a, you know, just extraordinary concentration upon the light pouring in 24 frames a second into the, the lens and being captured like a baseball catcher with a mitt, you know, catching bits and fragments of light, 24 of them a second. That's the way it felt, that intensity. Well, I'll tell you, what was amazing with 8 millimeter, you know, was that I, I was enabled to take the same roll and just uh, turn it upside down. You know, after I'd run it all the way through, I could just turn and run it all the way through again and, and, and have superimpositions uh, on as much of it as I wanted um, before I sent it into the lab to be processed. Now, in the beginning of doing that, uh, I, I um, kept notes on the, uh, you know, uh, it had a little uh, meter that showed how much film had gone through, and I kept elaborate notes as to where each shot ended, uh, or most of the shots ended, uh, on the first run through. And then working off of those notes, I brought in what seemed to me um, um, uh, useful or pertinent or co correlating uh, uh, images in superimposition, fading them in out of darkness because I could just put my hand over over the lens and run as much as I wanted and then fade in a certain scene, you know, that, that would seem appropriate with what had been photographed in the previous run through on that film. What I found very quickly was that I did this very much better uh, uh, without keeping those notes, very much more deeply. Uh, and, and, and more accurately, with more uh, feeling. You're not going to come in on the frame anyway. No meter is going to be that perfect. But th there would be a sense if I wasn't working off of my notes, the mind actually had it and could, could handle it uh, very much more uh, inspirationally. Now, do you call that a, co a coincidence? Another thing was the handheldness took on a new life. With a camera that light, uh, you, you really could become what cinematographer means, writer of movement. Uh, you became a writer of movement. You, you had th th that easeability uh, available at each shift of the light that you were catching. Uh, so uh, that was the life of the songs. And then, it, then to, as I got 16 millimeter equipment again, to get that quality over into 16 millimeter was the major task for a long time. Um, I was moving along a line of my loves, the, the children, uh, and, and photographing them growing up. Um, or um, a, an event could be a, 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 just a sweep of the eyes across a room, a room that contained the colors of my daily living, uh, songs. Uh, were made in that spirit also, uh, very inspired by Ezra Pound. Go, little naked and impudent songs. Uh, ring the doorbells of the bourgeoisie. Tell them you do no work and that you will live forever. 